Hello and welcome everybody. This is section 15 of the notes and here we are going to learn how we can deal with categorical data in linear regression. So categorical data is data where the values are not numbers but maybe one of a given number of groups that could be like sex, male or female, or maybe colors, maybe something is red, green or blue, or maybe some product has a small number of models. So that kind of input where we have data which tells us something about the outputs, but the input is not a number. And in this section we will learn a few tricks how we can incorporate this kind of data into our usual regression model, which is made for numerical input. Good. So let's see how we can do that. So the idea is rather simple. So let's just assume for an example that we have an input X, which is either red or green or blue. And somehow we need to convert this into numbers. And let me first do something which is nearly the solution. So we have XI, I from 1 to N. And what one could do is one could make a little table with three columns where we have red and green and blue here. And then for every sample, so here is I, if it's from one, two, three, four, up to N, we could write a one in the column of which category it is. So if the factor has level red, for the first sample, we would write one, zero, zero. If there's another red, we would write another one, zero, zero. And if now blue comes, we would write zero, zero, one and so on. So maybe it's a green and a blue, and then we could do that. And that is numbers, and we have not lost any information, so that will work well. And these three columns, they just stand for the one input. So if there are more inputs in the model, then that would go into our design matrix, but there would be columns behind, and there would be columns in front of it. And I said this is nearly the idea, but not quite. Namely, the problem we have is that at the beginning of the design matrix, we will likely have the intercept. And that's the column which is just one, all the way down to the end. And if you look at these values, if we add these three columns up for each row, then that sums to one for each row. So that is for the first row, one plus zero plus zero is one, one plus zero plus zero is one, zero plus zero plus one is one, and so on. So what we get is this plus this plus this minus the intercept equals zero. And that means these four columns are linearly dependent and then we get collinearity. And that's a problem we have seen in previous sections. Good, so what can we do? What we can do is we can notice actually there is some redundancy here, namely we don't actually need three different columns. If we cross out one, let's say we remove this one, we can still tell which level it was. So here, first row, we have one zero, it's red, because the one is in the red column. Next row, red again, and the next row gets interesting. There is zero zero, because the one is now removed. But you see, we can still tell it's blue, because zero zero cannot appear in any other row. So in this row, zero zero is blue, zero one is green, zero zero is blue, and so on, and down here, one zero is red. So we can pick any of these three columns and remove it, and we are still good. We still have not lost any information, and the two remaining columns still completely describe which level of the factor was taken. So that's really all there is to this idea. So the idea is if xi you now in general takes levels a1, a2, up to ak, then we add k minus one columns, well, let's give them name, so x triple one up to x triple k minus one, and we say x, let's say li twiddle is one if and only if xi equals l for l ranging from one up to k minus one. Good, so that's the same idea in mathematical notation. And when we did this, I wrote k minus one here because we have removed the case column, but you can see it does not really matter which column we remove. We could have removed any other of them. And when you do that in R, you will see it's sometimes a bit surprising which ones it picked. I think it's the one it first encounters in the data or maybe last encounters in the data or something like that. Good, but that's what we are going to do. 
Then the next question is how to interpret the regression coefficients corresponding to these columns. So our model is, say, yi is some inputs we haven't mentioned in our example, and then we have beta, and now I'm not quite sure how to name them. Let's call them beta tilde 1, x tilde i1. So that's one of the columns we added, beta tilde 2, x tilde i2, up to beta tilde k minus 1, x tilde i Oh, I messed up notation here. That should be x tilde 1 and then the i's entry. That should be x tilde 2 i's entry. And that should be x tilde k minus 1 i's entry. So that's what I meant to write. Then there may be more inputs which we haven't mentioned in the example and then plus epsilon i. And I should probably add the intercept here at the start. Good. So that's how our model works. And these here, let me remind you, we have x to the li is 1 if and only if xi is l, and these are 0 otherwise. So for every row, at most one of these beta tilde will contribute. So let's first assume we are in the group where the factor has the value k. That's the omitted column, which we didn't write. Then all of these equal zero. And then we have, so yi is, let me just write something. So then we have beta zero plus something, none of the extra terms, plus epsilon i if xi is k. Now let's think of the other cases. So if xi equals one, then that one is here. x triple i is one here. It's zero here, zero here, zero here. So we have only this term and beta triple one is multiplied with the one. So in this case, we have beta zero plus beta triple one. And there's no x in here because the x was this one, which was just a one in this case. So that is part of the intercept then plus epsilon i, if our categorical column xi equals 1. Or similarly, if it's 2, we get beta 0 plus beta triple 2 here. And then all the other inputs we haven't mentioned, plus epsilon 1. And that goes all the way down until beta 0 plus beta triple k minus 1, if xi is k minus 1. So that's what we get just because these x triddle can only be 1 or 0, depending on the value of xi. And if we have a 1, then that looks like a constant. So it's something like the beta 0. So we group it here at the start. And if it's a 0, it just does not appear. So I just wrote dots for the inputs, which are here and here. But it doesn't appear here. Good. And the odd one out we have seen is if xi equals k, then we just get beta 0. So what is factor does is it just changes the intercept. So the omitted one, this one is called the reference level normally. And that's the case because in this case, what we get is just the intercept. There is no change to the model. And for all the other values, we get changes relative to the reference level. So the intercept is what changes we have seen here. And if it's value level one, then what we get is we get beta triple one added to the intercept. If it's class 2, then we get beta triple 2 added to the intercept or so. So all of these are relative to what happens for the value k. Good. And that's what that is. And I want to just quickly show how that is done in R. And the good news is you don't need to do anything that's all automatic in R. The most you need to do is sometimes you need to tell R what is a factor. But very often that R picks that up on its own. So I'm going to do that now explicitly, but often it just works. So let's start up R and have a look. In R. So here I want to show you how R does factor codings. So let's say x1 is, say the numbers from 1 to 5, and x2 is, I write factor to make it explicit, it's a factor. Say it's red, green, blue, red, blue. Good. Now, to see how R encodes this, we can use the function model matrix that takes similar arguments to LM. And here, we don't need Y here because model matrix is just constructing the design matrix. So if I say Y is just a function of X1, then we get one column here corresponding to the intercept and another column corresponding to X1. Now, let's see what happens with X2. 
So you see we get a bigger matrix here. And if we look here, we have a column for green, we have a column for red, and blue was left out. So one here means the first sample is red, one here means the second sample is blue. Then we have zero, zero, which says the third sample is the left out color, which is blue. Then one here means red, and zero, zero means blue again. And let's just add a y, then we can do linear regression with this. Say it's one, two, one, one, three. I just made something up. Then we can do L, M, Y, twiddle, X1 plus X2. Let's call that M. And then if I do a summary M, it tells us a regression coefficient for the intercept for X1 and then for green and red. And these are values we need to add to the intercept. So in this fitted model, if it's a green sample, then the intercept should be 0.7 plus this. And if it's a red sample, then the intercept should be 0.7 minus 0.5. And if it's a blue sample, that's the base level, so everything is relative to this. So for blue samples, the intercept will just be 0.7692. That's how that works. Great, so this is the basic mechanism. And you have seen in the example there we had a factor with two levels and correspondingly we got two regression lines which were just parallel shifts of each other. And in general, if a factor has k levels, then we will get k different regression lines, one for each level. And if two of our inputs are levels, that escalates quite quickly, namely then the number of regression lines is the product of the two levels. So for each combination of levels of discrete, of categorical input variables, we will get one separate regression line. And the parameter estimates will tell us how we need to change the intercepts of these lines compared to the reference line. Good, so that was this. And in the coming section, we will see cases where we have also categorical data, but we have regression lines which are not parallel, could be like this. And clearly we need a new model for this, and that's what we'll see in the next video. So see you soon.